Hi and welcome everybody. In this video I want to show you the key ingredient to cinematic looking footage, which is depth. There are five different kinds of depth you can have in your videos and I will show you how you can create each one of those. The first one is depth with color. If you use colors that create a good contrast to each other, it tends to look more interesting than to have a lot of equal colors or colors that don't really have any relation to each other in the shot. Ideally use opposite colors to create the biggest possible contrast. These colors are called complementary colors. In the color wheel we see why the teal and orange look became so popular in Hollywood. Uh, the colors lie on the opposite end and since most of the movies contain people with skin tones um, which belong to this orange area, the teal is the logical result for the second color in the image. Here are two examples of my last hiking video where I used the teal and orange look a lot. I had an orange jacket on purpose and I turned all the shadow colors of the mountains into this greenish blue tone which is called teal. The second possibility to create depth in your shots is with perspective. This one here is basically a good looking image but it's kind of flat. Here we have this big mountain in the background uh, that is just a big wall without any visual depth, without any perspective. And I'm kind of far away from the camera as well, so we have no real foreground and no real background separation. This example is the total opposite of that. It has a lot of depth in it, we see the foreground and the background, and we can clearly see the perspective, which is introduced by these leading lines. You see these leading lines here that all converge to this point, these create depth. So when you are on location and want to film something, look for these leading lines, they will make your shot look interesting. The third possibility to create depth is movement. In this shot you clearly see the face in the foreground and the blurry mountain in the background. But we see no leading lines in this shot. So we don't know exactly if the background is far away or very near. What helps here is movement. Here we have a slight orbit movement which increases the illusion of depth in a shot. The foreground is moving slower than the background, this creates depth as well. Here we have another shot where you really see a whole orbit movement around the subject. And there is a second way to create movement which is called parallax. This is created when the camera moves past two objects that have a different distance to the camera. So the objects don't have to be moving at all, just the camera is moving and due to the different distances the background object moves slower and the foreground object moves faster. Sometimes moving your camera is the only way to introduce depth in a shot. Because if your subject or object you are filming isn't moving at all, the only chance to introduce depth um, to get the idea of which is near or far away from the camera is to move your camera, like on this shot here. If we move the camera now, we can clearly see that the foreground moves faster than the background and we see it must be a very high spot. The fourth way to create depth in a shot is with light and shadow. Have a look at Hollywood movies or basically the work of any good videographer, they play with light and shadows a lot. Look at this shot here, it really wouldn't be interesting without the light and shadows on the wall. I mean yes, the woman is good looking, but that's not everything. With the lights and with the shadows we really create interest that wouldn't be here without it. And to play with light and shadows is really important when you film faces. I created three lighting setups for you, please have a look at each and tell me which one is the most cinematic for you. So here's the first one. Now we have a look at the second one. And last but not least, the third one. So which one of these was the most cinematic one? If you say two or three, we can stay friends. If you say one, we have to discuss it. Because the first setup creates an evenly lit face almost without any shadows. This looks like an, an eyeliner commercial or a cheap sitcom, but not like a movie where they think about lighting. Setup 2 is top lit. The light is just above the head. This creates a quite moody and dark look, which is not so common, but definitely used in films. Setup 3 is the most common way to light a face, which is from a 45 degree angle from the side and from the top. In combination with a big light source, that creates a soft light and soft shadows as well. Of course, lighting is a huge topic. These were just some lighting basics, but you can already create much better results than without caring about lighting at all. The last one and the fifth possibility to create depth in your shots is with focus. The depth of focus of a lens adds an additional layer of depth in your shots. For example, if you look at this shot that was filmed with f8, you see that the background is not really separated from the foreground. The image looks kind of flat. 
If we bring down the focus to f2.8, the background looks a lot more blurry. The shot looks more interesting, more cinematic, if we want to use the term again. We could even enhance this effect by using a longer focal length. In this example, I use a 24mm lens with f2.8. Now I switch to a 70mm lens. We see that the background gets blurrier with this setup. I use longer focal lengths a lot. I have a Sigma Art 24 to 70 mm with f2.8 and if I film something with f2.8 with 24 mm and I want the background to get even blurrier, I just step back, zoom in to 70 mm and there you have it, a blurry background. But in my opinion, some people overdo that effect of blurry backgrounds. Have a look at Hollywood movies. There are some shots where the face is in focus and everything in the background is just blurry. But the majority of shots isn't filmed like that. Most other shots introduce structure in the background, leading lines, perspective, all the things we talked about, which you lose when you have a, that shallow depth of field. And there you have it. These were my five tips for creating depth in your shots, which were color, perspective, let's cheat, movement, light and shadow, and focus. If you liked the video, maybe give me a like below, maybe subscribe to my channel, and hopefully see you again in the next one.